Okay, so previously we had the servo set up in the quick start guide, and we had the motor just sitting on the bench, uh, not mounted to anything, and made sure that all the parameters made sense and that the motor ran and operated smoothly, but it had no load on it. So now what we've done is we've taken all these parameters, we have our auto tuning already set, we have our KVP and our KVI already set, and the motor's running smoothly. What I'm going to do now is add some load to it. I'm going to have it mounted. What I've done is put a gearbox onto it. So right now there's a five to one gearbox going into the shaft of the motor and everything's mounted together so the motor has some sort of load that it can draw. And what we're going to do is if I go ahead and set this to speed control and set this to some simple value, say 250 and enable it, we're going to see that the motor is running 250, 245, and it's doing fairly well. It has a little bit more of a pitch or whine to it. So when we tune this, notice that right now our stiffness is 13, our inertia ratio is 12. When I tune again, my stiffness went to 13 and my inertia ratio went to 19 because there is a reflected inertia that the gearbox adds to the motor so it's no longer in a standalone position. What I do want to do is just drop these KVI and KVI over 32s down to zero and operate this motor again and run it. And I can tell there's a little bit more vibration in the motor. Uh, there's a little bit more of a whine to it and that's because I did drop out the KVI. But what I want to do is increase this KVP value, and I'm going to be increasing it by about 5 hertz each time. These are going to round because it's a decimal, or it's a DEC value that is converted into hertz in the software. So even though I hit 50, it's 50.02. That's fine. What I want to do is run this until it runs fairly smooth, that the gains are appropriately smooth. The overshoot could be fine because that will be tuned out. By the KVI value. So when it overshoots, I should expect it to be above 250 because I'm targeting 250. And then when it drops down to about 240, to overshoot again above 250. So that's what I am getting. And it is operating fairly smoothly. I want to see if I add another 5 hertz to it. Yeah, it's much less vibratory now. Uh, but it is staying a little bit below that 250 range, now a little bit above because the KVI is not in there. So what I'm going to do is add just values of 1 to the KVI, run it and see if I can't get this speed reel right here, this value right here, to really stay around 250 as tight as possible. So that's getting into 263, 248, see if I can't add another one here and see that the wine is down much more. So there's not so much of that hum in the body of the motor anymore. And it, is, it is staying a little bit better around 250. Uh, if I increase this to 500, which I can do real time, see if anything else comes of it. Yeah, so it's doing a lot better right around 500 there as well. So I can maybe put this up to about 3. And look at that, really sticking around 500 now, 504, 495. That's doing a very good job. So what you want to do is after you've done your basic operation, basic setup, and the quick start to the motors, make sure you have the right motor number, make sure you have the right... Uh, settings in your IOs is run these auto tunes on the servo motor standalone and then run it again as you mount it into the actual apparatus or the application you're going to be running the motor on because it's going to be a different load, a different inertia, a different stiffness that you're going to see after the motor's been mounted.